Wow. Are you blessed? Amen. I am so blessed. Amen. It's an honor to be here. Uh, on behalf of Pastor Romy and his wife, and myself, and Sister Ruth, and the awesome choir, uh, we greet you in our native language. Magandang buhay! Amen. Uh, magandang buhay in our language means a good life. Amen. It's a privilege to be here. We are so honored. We are so humble to be here. Amen. And... Uh, Pastor Longa come to our church many, many times, and he is our family. We cannot say no to him, but we cannot say no to God. Amen? Amen. So we are here because we want to glorify God. Amen. And we are here because we are the servant of the Lord. Amen? Amen. We do it for love because we love God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So today we're going to talk about Moses. Yes? Moses, uh, the past two weeks, uh, Pastor Romy and Pastor Mike was talking about Noah. Today, we're going to talk about Moses. Amen? Amen. Do you know Moses? Yes. We all know Moses. Okay, uh, most, uh, we're going to jump in the story. The Bible says that the Israelite asked God's help, that he sent them a leader, Moses. In order to escape that, Moses' mother placed him in a basket when he was still a baby and set him adrift in the river Nile. He, she left his faith up to God's will. Moses' mother left his faith in the hands of God. So I titled my message today, Let God Be God. Amen? Amen? So let us pray and allow the Holy Spirit to come and minister to us. Father, thank you. Yes, Lord, this is a holy ground. Amen. And we ask you, the Holy Spirit, to come and teach us. Father, you said, Lord, in your words, two or three gathered together. You are in our midst. Yes. Father, we thank you that your words is powerful than two-edged sword. And you also said, Father, that when you send forth your word, it will never go void. Holy Spirit, come. Come minister to your people. Father, you said, Lord, that when you are lifted up, you will draw all men unto you. Father, draw us to you, Father. This is all about you. None of us, Father, but all of you. Father, we glorify your name. We ask you today that your will be done, your kingdom come, for the glory and honor of your Son, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Yes, we title our message. I titled the message today, Let God Be God. Amen. So our first reading today will be at Exodus 4, 10, 16. Then Moses said to the Lord, Oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither before nor since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. So the Lord said to him, Who had made the man's mouth, or who makes the mute, the deaf, the seeing, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore, go, and I will be with your mouth and teach you what you shall say. But he said, O oh my Lord, please send by hands whomever else you might send. So the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses, and he said, Is not Aaron the Levite your brother? I know that he can speak well, and look, he's also coming out to, to meet you. When he sees you, he'll be glad in his heart. Now you shall speak to him and put the words in his mouth, and I'll be with your mouth and with his mouth, and I will teach you what you shall do. So he shall be your spokesman to the people, and he himself shall be a mouth for you, and you shall be to him as God. Bless the reading of his word. How many among us makes excuses? Come on, who makes excuses? I make excuses. When Pastor Longa told me to preach, I said, no, not me, Pastor Romy. Pastor Romy is a better preacher than, my, than myself. But here we are. When God sends us, we should go. Amen? Amen? 
The Bible said that 600,000 fighting men were among the Israelites who left Egypt. This is equivalent to at least total population of 2.5 million, including women, children, elderly, and Presley tribe. The Bible also say that out of this, only Joshua was allowed to enter Canaan. No wonder Moses made excuses. He even said, Lord, what about if they don't believe me? Didn't we say that often? Lord, what about if they don't believe me? You can see that at Exodus 3.11. But Moses asked, who am I that I should go to Paro and bring the Israelite out of Egypt? Moses is like you and me, without our ability to do the task God wants us to do. We said, Lord, I don't know how to speak. I'm slow to speech and slow in tongue. We are afraid of what people is going to tell us. We are afraid that people will laugh about us. But this is what the Lord is saying to you today. Who had made the man's mouth? Who makes the mute, the deaf, the deaf, the deaf and the seeing, or the blind? Have I not the Lord? So God is asking you today to be bold. The word of God is powerful in our mouth. Amen po ba? The word of God is powerful in our mouth. He gave us mouth to preach the word. Amen? Amen. He said he anointed us to preach the good news. Amen? Amen. So don't be afraid. Wherever God sent us, his spirit will be with us. If God is for you, who can be against you? Amen? Amen? May I repeat that? If God is for you, who can be against you? God's original plan for Israel was to take the promised land in days, not in decay. It took Israel 40 years to be ready. If you have faith and believe you can move mountain, how can you justify that journey? Allow me to give you a brief background of who the Israelite is. They are grumblers, mourners, that's why it took them ages to go round and round their own pit. They were complaining to Moses and Aaron everything they left behind. Okay, I will take you to a journey again. Exodus 16, 1 and 3. And they journey from Elim and all the congregation of the children of Israel come to the wilderness of sin which is between Elim and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after they departed from the land of Egypt. Then the whole con 15 days, then the whole congregation of the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said to themselves, Oh, that we have died by the hands of the Lord in the land of Egypt. When we sat by the paths of meat and when we ate bread, to the full, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly. They're complaining. They think that they, Aaron and Moses took them to the wilderness to be killed in, with hunger. In those 40 years, God is watching them in their journey. Their own clothes never worn out. Amen? Amen? The Hebrews spent 40 years wandering in the wilderness before they finally take the promised land. While they, were de while they were in the desert, God gave them a miraculous provision. Manna from heaven and water from a rock. We often talk about these miracles in, moderns, in modern believers today and give God credit for the miraculous last minute provision. Don't we always want a last-minute provision? Yes. Trial can come to us through several means and with several purpose in mind. Let me suggest some to you. First of all, trial comes to test the strength of our faith. Amen? Amen. Trial comes to us to, to test the strength of our faith. You may ask, does God have to test you to find what was in your heart? Certainly not. God doesn't have to test any of us to find what was in our heart. God tests us so we can find out. Amen? Amen? God tests us so we can find out. In other words, he assesses us in doing a spiritual inventory. 
as a Christian, we should have a spiritual inventory. He assesses us in self-examination. You need to know and I need to, to know the strength of our faith. So God allowed trials in our lives to demonstrate us the strength and weakness of our faith. I always wanted to know the strength of my faith so I can be useful for God. Amen? Amen. Don't you want to, to know the, the, the strength of your faith so you can be useful for God? Amen. Amen. Jesus said, Mark 9, 23, if you can believe all things, all things are possible to him that believe. Here, Amen. isn't it? Amen. All things are possible to him that believe. Amen. Yes. Okay, let's go to a journey again. The Bible, it is, in the Bible it is implied that the Israelites had migrated to Egypt and sold themselves into the slavery to escape famine. After time, the scripture claimed that God commanded Israelites to depart Egypt where they had been slaves and to make exodus to find the promised land, the land of milk and honey. Don't you want to find the promised land? Yes. The land of milk and honey? Yes. When we first come to London, we think that this land is the land of milk and honey. I don't think so now. After this Brexit, everybody will be. <laughs> so Moses, the Israelite patriot, went to Paro and announced that God demanded Paro to set the Hebrew slave and free and permit them to leave Egypt. Paro refused, and God sent them plagues upon Egypt until Paro changed his mind. There were 10 plagues that have said to be unleashed by God. Water was changed into blood. The plagues of frogs, lice, flies, disease, livestock, boils, firestorm, locusts, darkness, and last but not the least, the death of the firstborn Egyptian children. Not exactly a good time for the Israelite. As the children of Israel journey from Egypt towards Canaan, they will surely have many needs. They need massive amount of food and water. Both of these were met by supernatural power of God. The passage gives us some insight into the food they ate as they journey. Manna that fell in the wilderness was a great blessing to the people of Israel. It fed them in the harsh land for 40 years. God used it to sustain them, strengthen them, and to supply, and supply them until they arrived in Canaan. Manna was given to them to feed their fleshly body. Manna was also served to teach them a spiritual truth. Allow me to repeat that. Manna send, was sent by God to sustain them and strengthen them and, su and supply them until they arrived in Canaan. Manna was also given to them to feed their fleshly body. Manna was also served to teach them is spiritual truth. Amen? Amen. Manna was served to teach them is spiritual truth. First thing they do, the Israelite is murmuring, you brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly. This is another common practice among those who murmur. Instead that Moses and Aaron have a bad intention. They insisted that Moses and Aaron have a bad intention. Of course not. Moses and Aaron had no interest in killing the whole assembly of Israel. It was a horrible accusation to make. Yet, a complaining heart often finds it easy to accuse the people they complain about against the worst motive. Typical attitude of human being. Amen? Amen. Sometimes our intentions are... Um, They misinterpret our intention. In spite of our good intention, they, they think that we are doing bad things. The Israelites were God's chosen people. They had been redeemed from certain death on obeying God's command in sheltering under the protection of the Passover sacrificial blood in their houses. They were free from slavery, from Egyptian taskmaster. They were the people of God. The church of the Old Testament, the equivalent of New Testament believers in Jesus, although still waiting for the promised 
Messiah. But did they move directly to Canaan, the land given to their forefather Abraham? Oh no. We were told that the Israelite com community came to the desert of sin. The way forward leads to the wilderness of clay, inhospitable, lonely place which symbolized this world through which they must travel. But there is a good news. Let's go again at Exodus 16, 4, 5. God announced to Moses the coming dead from heaven. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather the day portion every day, that I might, that I might test them. Whether or not they will walk in my instruction. On the sixth day, when they prepare, they, they bring in, they will be twice as much as they gather daily. The idea of manna is originated with God is not a man's idea. Amen? The idea of manna originated from God is not a man's idea. All the people of Israel could think what the food they have left behind. Didn't we sometimes think of what we left behind, the regrets? We think that we can do better. But it's not true. God's plan is always better. Amen? Amen. The people would have sought their own something. They have to gratify their flesh. They think if they stay in Canaan, they can produce something that will gratify their flesh. It's not true. By sending manna, God totally removed men from the equation. Amen? Amen. By sending manna, God totally removed men by the equation. You know why? Because it will be, it will, it will be, it will be for generation to come. You can always remember that God rained manna in the wilderness for the Israelite people. Amen? Amen. Manna was also a gift of free grace. They deserved judgment and death, but God gave them life. Amen? Amen. They deserved judgment and death, but God gave them life. The purpose of giving the bread from heaven was not only to provide the material needs of Israel, but also to teach them eternal lesson of dependence on God. So we have to allow God to be God. Amen? Amen. In this journey, God is teaching them to be more dependent on God. Amen? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 8.3 he humbled you and let you be hungry and feed you with manna which you did not know. Nor did your father know that he might make you understand that man does not live by bread alone, but by every words that proceed out of the mouth of the Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that come out from the mouth of God. Feeding Israel to the bread from heaven was an example of God's way of cooperating with men. Israel could not bring the manna and God would not gather it for them. Each has to do their part. Amen? Every blessing of God, we need to do our part. Amen? Amen. We are wasting our prayer if we are not cooperating with God. We have to do our part. We cannot ask God to give out something. You are not actively pursuing it. Amen? So if you ask God for a job, you have to look for one. James 2, 4 said, Faith without, faith without deed is dead. Faith should be in action. Amen? So if we are asking God something and we are not actively pursuing it, it's a waste of our prayer. Faith without deeds is dead. Amen? God's provision, God's provision come, we often do not recognize it. When God's provision come, we often did not recognize it. God meet the needs of Israel, but he did it in a way that they did not expect. The blessing of bread from heaven comes with responsibility and obedience. Amen? Every blessing that comes to us has responsibility and obedience. Amen? First, God specifically instructed to gather only for six days. Tomorrow is a Sabbath rest 
Holy Sabbath to the people. This was the first time God spoke to Israel about the Sabbath. God essentially forced them to honor the Sabbath by not providing any bread from heaven on the Sabbath day. Number two, but still, some of the people went out on the Sabbath day to gather, despite what God said. Some went looking for bread from heaven when he said there would be none. God's word was true and they found none. People today is still looking for life and fulfillment in place of God. He said there will be none. And only God can feel that missing pieces in our heart. No one else. Amen? Amen. Only God can feel that missing pieces in our heart. A lot of people think God is a killjoy. They're missing the profound truth. Jesus is the joy giver. In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. Amen? Amen. In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. The, jo the Lord is the joy giver. They ate manna until they come to the border of the land and of Cana. As important as it was for God to, pro to provide bread from heaven, it is also important for God to stop providing it. It was essential that Israel be put again in a position of receiving God's normal provision through hard work, which itself is a blessing of God. Amen? Is hard work a blessing from God? Amen? Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians 3.10 for even when we were with you, we commanded you this. If anyone will not work, neither shall he eat. God wants to teach the Israelite responsibility of hard work. Knowing our help comes from God, even in our ordinary life. Work is a blessing that we should never be a burden to other people. Amen? The Israelites are stiff-necked people. Stubborn and rebellious, full of pride, they never listened to Jehovah, let alone to Moses. Number one, notwithstanding, they did not heed Moses. They clearly hear God's command, and, and they clearly knew God's instruction. Yet, for some reason, they, they, they feel they, they don't need to obey God. There was a harsh penalty for their disobedience. What they gather in their disobedience is bread full of warm and uneatable. So they gather it every morning. Number two, so they gather it every morning, every man according to their needs. The bad experience of their disobedience lead them reluctantly to obey. Number three, when the sun became hot, it melted. That is manna. Apparently, the bread from heaven had to be gathered and prepared early in the morning. This was God's Gracious way of forcing forth ethics upon the nation of Israel. God himself had a work ethic. Amen? When he created heaven and earth, in six days he rested. Seven, in six days, he, when he created heaven and earth, in six days, on the seventh day, he rested. We should never exhaust ourselves. Don't do full time and far time and still running around for extra money. Don't we all sometimes do that? We had full time and still running around for extra money. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. For you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit which is in you, which you have from God. You are not your own. Yes, your body is not your own. We need to look after it, that we are healthy and able to serve God. Don't keep chasing the wind. God did not give us human body to use it and abuse it as we like. Are we abusing our body? I hope not. He is a designer of everything and sees on everything for his purpose. Do you know that God created us for his purpose? Acts 17, 28, for in him we live and move and have our being. Also, some of our own poets had said, for we are his offspring. Amen? Amen? Now the difference. What is the difference between want and need? How God provided your need? I was young and now I'm old. I have never seen the righteous begging for bread. Amen? Amen. 
When the Israelites grumbled under the slavery of Egypt, Pharaoh took straw from them to make their lives hard. But there, God met their grumbling with a gracious promise. Then Adonai said to Moses, his servant, I will rain down bread from heaven, that your bread from heaven will be remembered and celebrated for a generation to come. That is manna. He rained down bread from heaven that would be remembered and celebrated from generation to come. The desert experience of the Israelite is ours as well, but we can see it with slightly twists. We are privileged to be living in the age in which the kingdom of God already come in Christ. Although we are still wait for the second coming, even though we are fully capable of grumbling and complaining and gossiping ourselves, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit enable us to resist those sins. Amen? Amen? So we should never grumble, we should never gossip, and we should never moan. Amen? There are two things I want to emphasize here. First, the desert is the hostile territory for us. We are just passing through. It is still God's word, world. It belongs to him, and he is still very much in control of his creation. Old in a way, not always clear to us, just as desert post to no barrier to God, to act mightily in behalf of his people by providing food and water. The desert also is God's disposal. Amen? The desert in which we live is fully at God's disposal. We need to take comfort in the fact that we are here. We are Lord, the Lord's special people. Amen? Are we the Lord's special people? Yes. Pastor Longa was saying, we are the child of God. Amen? Amen? We are the child of God. But we should not become too comfortable where we are. We are to fully trust God while we are here, not like the Israelite. While at the same time, not allowing our current circumstances to define our ultimate reality. Our gaze must always where we are going, not where we are. We must keep a light touch of this world. We must remember that we are pilgrims in this earth. Our citizenship is in heaven. Amen? Amen. So you're not British. Your citizenship is in heaven. Amen? Amen? Secondly, we must not judge our circumstances by how we see them, but how God wants us to see them. That is what the Israelite, guilty, they were guilty of self-centeredness. Amen? Throughout Exodus, we have seen their inclination to define their situation in terms of their own perception. Whether it's lack of straw or make bricks or advancing Egyptian army on the shore of the Red Sea. The Israelite did not respond the way. We would expect the people who have seen the Lord's mighty hands at work. Therefore, God wants us to look at the big picture by not seeing only the version of things so natural to us that however is the flesh. We need to live by the Spirit. Keep reminding us that we cannot do it by ourselves. We need to allow God to be God. Amen? Amen. God doesn't need our help. We need to allow God to be God. Amen? Amen. Zechariah 4, 6, I'm finishing. So he answered and said to them, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. We must learn from this lesson. When better, when better experience come to us in this life, don't go. Go to God for comfort. As sweet as human sympathy may be, it is only God who can wipe away tears and heal our broken heart. When your soul is pain and hungry, do not seek the safety of anything this world has to offer, but feed upon the true bread from heaven. And when you're thirsty, drink only the living water. Allow me, as I close, I'm going to close. Allow me to give you four attributes that we should remember who God is based on this study. Being in the wilderness, this is where the Israelites should have reminded themselves in their journey. Jehovah Rapha. He is our healer. 
The God that can wipe away tears and heal our broken spirit. He is the God that healed thee. Number two, He is Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace that the world cannot give. The God, the world cannot give the peace of God that the world cannot give. He's the only one that can send peace in our troubled heart. He said, "Don't let our heart be troubled. Trust God. Be still and know that He is God." Amen. Let God be God. Number three, he is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. His provision will never run dry. He promised that he will open the gates and windows of heaven and pour out blessing upon blessing that none of our two hands can contain. Number four, he is Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner. He, his desire is to give us victory. We are more than a conqueror to him that loves us. We will learn to lean on him and trust him when the battle seems more than when we can handle. Remember, the battle belongs to God. Victory is through us, through Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Victory is for us through Jesus Christ. I hope we are not like the people of Israel. We often find ourselves in a difficult situation. And we grow anxious and look back, full of regret and with things have turned out differently. But we need to understand that God will test us as he tested Israel. This trial may have great benefits for us as a believer, such as increasing our trust and dependence upon the Lord, or bringing us back to the glory, the way of thinking, way of living and thinking. In many other reasons, let us not rebel when things get difficult, but let us go to God in prayer and serve him with all our hearts and soul and mind. Amen? Amen. Remember, he rained down manna from heaven to satisfy the needs of our soul. At the end of every rain, there is a rainbow. All things will work together for good to those that love God. Amen? Amen. My question as I close. Is Jesus your daily bread or your seasonal dish? Ephesians 2.10, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for, for good works, which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk with him. Amen? We should walk with God hand in hand. Yes? Amen. We are here not for ourselves. We are here to proclaim the good news, Amen. that Jesus is the Lord of all. Amen? Amen. Jesus should remain God. In every aspect of our lives, Jesus should be the Lord of all. Amen? As I close, I am calling my team to sing that song, Faithful One. Amen? He is faithful. He will remain faithful. In spite of what we've done, in spite of uh, our shortcoming, He will always remain faithful. Let us sing this song. Join us in singing this wonderful song to the Lord. Faithful one, so unchanging. Ageless one, you are my rock of peace. Lord,
see it again. You're faithful, one. Oh, faithful one, so we are not hearers of the word but the doers. Amen. Amen. Lord Father, we are so grateful and thankful Hallelujah. Lord that we are here today Hallelujah. and we all know that this is not an accident Lord that you have brought us here Amen. to be blessed O oh God not Hallelujah. only to our fellowship Hallelujah. but especially to the words that you have given us today Father. Lord we are grateful and so thankful Lord that you are always with us and no one can be against us, O oh God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, may your Holy Spirit always guide each and every one of them. Lord, even to the end of this service, O oh God, Amen. and even to those things that we're going to be still hallelujah. doing, O oh Lord. Lord, we ask you to bless them, Father. And to all the people that have been here, O oh God, let your Holy Spirit dwell in their hearts and minds. Amen. We praise you, we honor you. Most precious name of you, Lord Jesus Christ, is our thanksgiving to you. And we all say, Amen. 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 If you want, we will minister. If you want prayer, we will minister. Pastor Longa, if anybody wants to be prayed, we will minister. We are here to serve God. Amen. Amen. I just want us to respond to the word of God. I want all of us to stand and reflect on what the the message and find ourselves into the message. What is it that we can work out? What is it that we need to strengthen up? Because God, when God speaks this way, He's got something that He wants us to move. It's either individual or as a congregation.
And also while Pastor Ron is singing this song, I want, if you need a prayer, please come forward. There is many pastors, seven pastors in front of us who will minister to you. I will give a free will to go to the pastor that you want to, to pray. That's a free will. Just join and say, look, pray for me for this and that. If you don't want to share that, just ask for a prayer. This is an opportunity when God is saying, I am God. When God wants to, to, to establish his, his authority on us, that he reigns, he lives in the eternity. Let's all stand in the presence of God and reflect to the word that has been preached. If you need to, to come forward and, and, uh, um, and be prayed for, whatever it is, maybe you want to say, look, I want to change this. I want to commit into this. I want God to help me not to be a mooner anymore. This is an opportunity. Maybe you are here, you are not born again. You said, this thing is, it, it tries many times, but it's not working. How could it be? possible but God is able today. You can give your life to Jesus and the Holy Spirit will cause you to walk. It's not about you to do those changes. The Holy Spirit is there to make the changes. The Holy Spirit is here amongst us to search our hearts to bring us to his presence. As the minister was preaching, I had things in my heart that I have to do some rearrangement about my life. Salvation is not easy. It's not easy. There is fight every day. It's not easy. The message was saying, he, Moses himself even be, didn't believe that he can do it. That's me. When he called me, I said, now you must be joking or talking about the person next to me. Several years I was trying to do my own things. He is faithful. He is faithful. I've seen him. I've seen him. I experience his move. As the pastor sings, that's a free will. You can come forward. I also want to appeal to two ladies who are among us, uh, Sister Zodwa and Sister Zanele. I know they lost their relative later this uh, month or last month. Can we just pray as a brethren to stand with these sisters because they lost their valuable friends, their family members. As a body of Christ, we have to stand for those who are amongst us, who are our friends, who go through those, those things. I will ask them to come forward. If they are here, I can see Sister Zanele there. I can, um, my sister was somewhere here. Let us pray for them. Let us believe God that he will strengthen them. He will give them hope in a hopeless situation. Because he said there he is God. Yeah. 
have chosen me Love has called my name I've been born again Into your family Your blood froze through my veins I'm no longer Yes, I'm no longer slave of God. is in hospital or is sick or else you have somebody or you, you, you who just um, passed away in your family come forward we have to trust God that you are a child of God you are not a slave to fear you are not a slave to those death and everything and also as a congregation I want us to lift our hands there is a brother of ours who used to fellowship with us here. He was in a, in a critical condition in the hospital. Brother David Serene. He needs our prayers now. The whole family is sitting in the hospital like day by day. When we have a, such a God who can move the mountains, let us, let us stand in the camp for that family today. I think they expect us to pray. They expect us to cry to our God. Sing when you sing. I am a child of God. You split the sea. You split the sea so I can walk right through it. My fears are drowned in perfect love. You rescued me. I can stand up and sing I am a child of God Can I ask the pastors to come and pray for our sisters? They have lost their loved ones They need our strength They need our prayers And also the congregation to pray also For this brother that is in the hospital Just lift up your voice while our brother is singing, everybody to pray wherever you are. It's time now to approach the throne of God. When he's singing like I'm no longer a slave, let us claim to God that we are the children of God. Whatever we say in heaven, whatever we, we bow here on earth, it shall be in heaven. That's the authority of the children of God that the Lord has given us. John 17, when he was living, he was praying for them. He said, I leave my glory, my presence. What I use on earth, I give unto you. That you will also do what I did. We are not helpless. Come on, pastor, let's pray for this saints, please. Let's move, the time is going. Let's pray for this one. David Serabi. He needs our prayers. He's our friend. He's our brother. Maya Dabashiki said in the name of Shiba Bayama. Rebe Yebo Shiba Bayama Hadaba Kasilana. Moya Dabashiki said in the name of Shiba Bayama Kasila. We stand in the camp of God. For this family, Lord, my God, Serebi family, Lord. In the hospital where he is, they are. Lord, we are saying, Lord, you are God who said in Jeremiah 32, verse 17 and 27, I am the Lord of all flesh. Is there anything? 
sing to heart for you, Lord. We stand in the camp of Lord Jesus and command, Lord, my God, those things that are in the Lord as though they are in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We stand, Lord, to say, Death, where is your sting? In the name of Jesus, we pray for the move of God. We pray for the presence of God in that world where He is, oh God. Touch Him, oh God. Heal Him, oh God. Let the mighty power of God raise Him where He is, oh my we need a miracle, Lord. We pray for your hand. We pray for your hand. You pray for your hand, Jesus. The same God who hid the rock, Lord. The same God who caused the manna to come down to earth from heaven to earth is still the same God. The same God who created his life is still the same God. Even today, Lord, as we stand as this family, Lord, and say, Lord, you are able in the name of Jesus. Maya daba se de me te se. Re me ye mo se baba ya ba han daba ka se. Mo ya daba se de me ke se de le le mo se ka. Mo daba se te me ke se. Re ne ye mo se baba ya ba ha ka se. Mo ka se. Lastly, I will ask our, our, our pastor, uh, uh, Apostle Bailey, to pray. You know, um, when I was uh, looking at the storm that will hit uh, Philip, um, their home in Philippines, I phoned our sister and said, what's going on there? Are your family all right? And we know those things, the natural disasters that do come. I don't know whether your families are, are affected on that. But we just want to make a special prayer today for your families, your relatives, your, your countrymen, so you, you, everything, the economy and everything, just the apostle of God to pray for that nation. We don't know what's happening, or maybe you lost your family, maybe just the properties and everything. We just want to, 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 to lift God in every situation there. Apostle. <laughs> Father God, in the name of Jesus, we lift up the land of the Philippines into your hands. King of glory, your hand is so powerful. And Lord, you've said that whatsoever we shall bind shall be bound in heaven. Father, we take authority in the name of Jesus to, to, to bind that storm in the name of Jesus. And also we commit the families of your servants, your daughters, your sons, the Lord, may you take care of them. May you shelter them, Lord. May you protect them from any disaster. May you cover them, Lord, under the power of your Holy Spirit, under the power of your hand. Father, we pray that may you minister to those families, Lord God Almighty. Send your angels, Lord, to stand by their families, to support them, Lord, to help them, Father, from 
any attack. Father, we thank you. Comfort the families, Lord, that have lost their loved ones, Lord. Give them strength, Lord. Heal the sick. Deliver the bound. Be glorified, O Lord God Almighty. In Jesus' mighty name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Let us sing a song, just any song that uh, we want us to bless us as we do an um, tithes and offering. Let us just bless the Lord today. We, and after that, I will pass um, the mic to Pastor Mkondo to finish up the service. baskets my father thank you lord bless them mightily in jesus name i pray amen, amen. hallelujah amen offering to the lord oh what an awesome service today i just want to thank uh, pastor roni is that it yes and the congregation you've really blessed us today and we brought the love the worship of God upon our lives. And I would also want to thank also Pastor Billy for being here all the way from Uganda. 
the country we say the pearl of Africa. Hallelujah. Amen. Once again, my apologies. You're supposed to give the message. My apologies <laughs> unto me. I was on holiday. So, but God is good all the time. And we just want, the message was powerful. The message you said was a message for us, for the church. Hallelujah. And before I just say something, first I just want to say um, announcement which Tata Guta, the father of the house, has confirmed. We shall start a reverend, a reverend I feel, it's been a blessing amongst our midst. She said um, from 17 October 2018 at 8 p.m. she shall start holding Christian counseling. If you need to talk, if you need somebody, um, she's making herself available. And we thank you for that because it's something I'd wanted to do and God is now using you to do that. Hallelujah. So from 17th October, what day is that? Wednesday, yes. 8 o'clock, there's counseling, there's also prayer. Hallelujah. And we are supposed to be having a council meeting today. But the way I was raised, that when you're hosting people, we can't be all there in a meeting and we've got guests. Amen? We've got guests amongst us. So if, if all the church council members, if we could just extend that to not next week, but the following week. It's quite urgent meeting, but we need to respect. We have many people here. They've come far away, and we need to host them. Hallelujah. And show them. And we've got our pastor. He's also going, so it's not nice. We are busy there, and we've got guests. Hallelujah. So we extend it. Hallelujah. Amen, church. Amen. And just thank you once again, man of God. Um, may God go with you, and may Assemblies of God, Cuba, may they go and fill them afresh. Hallelujah. And by God's grace, we know Pastor Lunga was city to city who come to Havana and they, hallelujah. Same Uganda and Philippines. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I just want to thank you all. It's been a blessing. Time has moved and we love you and um, everything that you are doing. You know, the church, you've been doing all these things. And uh, I know, Pastor Lunga, we had a word, and I'm sure you'll be able to assist us. Just time to set, help us set us our stuff. The things are there, but they just need to be in place. Hallelujah. If we could quickly just go to the word of the Lord. If you could please put, continue from that word, Deuteronomy 34, just verse 1 to 3. Deuteronomy chapter 34 from verse 1 to 3. Hallelujah. God is amazing. Hallelujah. Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo on the top of Pisgah, which is across from Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead as far as Dan, O Naphtali and the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the western sea, the south and the plain of the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees as far as Zohar. This is the land of promise, and this is the land we need to stand upon and move into, going to Canaan and forgetting Egypt and Pharaoh. Hallelujah. And we are moving forward. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. This is the word of the Lord. Pastor, can you please come forth and just give us a blessing? I'm about to close. Pastor Roni, yes. Okay, we're just about to close. If you could come and just bless us. And before we do that, I'll just ask Tatanguta, can you please just come and thank? And then I'll give over to Pastor to pray and bless us. If you just thank us for the church for coming, the congregants from the other ministry. They've closed everywhere and 
one of your sons you've been since the 80s, Pastor Billy. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> uh, I just want to say thank you to the Lord for all of you. May the Lord continue to strengthen you and bless you and help you in every situation you find yourself in. Just lift up your hand and say, Lord Jesus, be with me in your wonderful name. Amen. Well, it's lovely for all of you to be here today. May the Lord continue to be your strength and your joy. In Jesus' name. Amen. Just a quick one before we close. Like Pastor Lunga said, there's Uu Tata David Serami. He's really sick. Royal, we went there with my wife. He's really sick. So if you could just phone the family and be encouragement. And if you're able to go there, you just see them. But we've prayed. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. As we all know, we're one family here. And just really would like to, to uh, extend our love. You know, uh, The TJF is an extended family of yours. We are one in Christ, one in the Father and the Spirit. And I really hope and pray that this will not be just the second or third that will be joining us together. You know, I, we are looking forward that we will strengthen our bond and our relationship as one in Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. And I really would like to pray as a family. You know, no denominations, no, no church or whatever name we get, give to our ministry, but under one body. That's in Jesus Christ. Amen. So let's bow our heads. Dear Father, I'm lifting up to you right now. This family, oh God. These true children of yours, Lord. I ask you to protect them, oh Lord. Keep them in good health and out of danger. Keep them strength in their time of needs, Lord. Let them hear your voice and follow your leading. Help them to always trust and obey you, Lord, for this is the very essence of our salvation. Trust and obey. Fill our lives with godly people that the love and care for them may embrace, Lord, and away from those that would do harm to us, O God. Help us all to make good and godly decisions, O Lord. Give us the courage when we are scared and direct us when we are lost. Let us know that you are truly love us, O God. That your love will never, never run out, Lord. Help us, O God, to always focus on you. And this is what we pray for, Father. Lord, Lord join us in heart and mind, O God, as one family. For we are your children. We are no longer fear of death, Lord, or anything else, but we are your children. Amen. And we ask this in the most precious name, most awesome name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and we all say, Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us share the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. I'm sure there's some refreshments, so you may be seated, and the team will direct us. Amen. Just greet one another in love. Amen.